what I didn't see my mom do after her remission. She wasn't supporting her nervous system. She went back into full throttle of the busyness, the keeping up with the Joneses, the three kids, there was three of us, and also just forgot to really pour back into her where then the cancer came back. And, and then this time it spread through her lymph nodes, it spread through her body, it spread everywhere. It spread actually to her lungs and her brain. And that was a very scary situation. Women who have dense breasts, it's harder to find cancer tumors and it's gonna get missed on a mammogram. However, Hey loves, do me a quick favor and hit the subscribe or follow button wherever you are tuning into this. It helps grow the show more than you know. Thank you so much again and enjoy. We always start our episode by opening up with one of my That Suck Now What conversation cards. Actually, it's our affirmation card deck. This one's our affirmation card deck. And we are going to start, hmm, okay. I think I opened with this one before, but maybe I will, I will do another one so that we have two. The first one was, I am the only one who determines how my story unfolds. I am the author of this new chapter. And I've done this one recently, but maybe this is the one for us today that we really need to hear. So I will leave this here. Okay. Each breath reminds me that I am fully alive and far from finished. I'm only getting started. So take both of these and set that intention today. Maybe we needed two today. And if you are curious about these, I will link them in the show notes. You can get them at thatsuckednowwhat.com, thatsuckednowwhat.com. And it's our 52 card deck. And I always love to open up with these to really set the intention. And this month is a very special month. We are braving health and I know that the fall changes are in the air. The weather is starting to change. I'm super excited about that. We have a lot of movement. And I don't know about you, but fall seems to be the time when, at least for us here in Texas, we get to roam more outside. The weather has definitely cooled down. It is really amazing. And it's also Navratri season which is uh, getting closer to our Indian New Year slash Christmas, Diwali at the end of the month, but it's also Breast Cancer Awareness Month. And I have been on such a health kick this past year, really kind of tuning into my health and even really being mindful of just the way that I am spending my time because I know that I really love humans and I love keeping really big social circles. We host a lot and the kids are getting older. And I know that for me, I am starting to notice that I am cocooning a little bit more and I'm cocooning a little bit more to really not only protect my energy, but also I'm just noticing and being so cognizant because I've been on this health kick this year that this year I really wanted to brave my health. And so earlier this year, and for those of you who are just tuning in, but earlier this year I did a full body scan. This was with Prenuvo. They are a big uh, MRI company. And I will link that episode in the show notes. And they are in the United States. I don't know if they are anywhere else, but I will definitely link them and our episode in the show notes. And it screens for more than hundreds of diseases from cancers, tumors, and all kinds of things. And I think while it is a hefty price tag, for somebody who has lost members of her family to cancer, this was something that I really, really wanted to do for myself. I wasn't breastfeeding anymore. My youngest was two and a half. Now she's turned three. But we were out of the like baby, baby stage where I could actually make the time to take care of my health. Not only that, I've been doing a lot of different kinds of detoxes and from all different kinds and and, uh, from your traditional Ayurvedic cleanses to other different kinds of fasts. Happy to talk more about this on a different podcast if it interests people. If it does, please just comment if you're watching this on YouTube or send us a note. I always love, love, love to know what is sparking your interest lately. And as an homage to my mama, my mama was a, boy, was she a fierce warrior. And she 
had a lump on the side, kind of like underneath her armpit of her breast. And I remember being 10 years old and my mom was doing one of those exams and she had my dad like a, like, you know, her own like breast health, uh, health, breast health exam. And she had my dad feel this bump under, almost underneath her armpit. And it felt strange, but it was definitely a prominent bump lump. Then later on, and I, I just remember this part so vividly at 10 years old, they weren't really concerned about it, but they're like, okay, that's there. That's interesting. So long story long, she ended up getting a series of tests. Now this was a very long time ago, like 30 years ago. And then they found that it was breast cancer. And so that began her journey towards a six year battle of, you know, back and forth visits. And she was in remission for some time. All right, loves. I see you, 98% of you watching right now are not subscribed and that's totally cool and I so appreciate it. But if you're enjoying this episode, if this is dropping valuable content for you, then why not join our fam? By subscribing, you'll never miss a beat, especially on the amazing tips, advice, and insights that we have on our incredible guests from around the world. Plus, you'll get a chance to win some incredible prizes and it's absolutely free. It keeps us connected to everything that we're doing and helps us get even more and more incredible guests. And it would mean the world to me if you could just hit the subscribe button and I promise to make you even more valuable content. And I don't think you know, the things that we talk about now, the things that I would, I love to brave with you all is how we are taking care of our emotional, spiritual, mental, emotional, I said emotional twice because that's important, emotional health and our spiritual health. And I think, you know, this year seeing both of my kids grow and get out of the baby stage, I think it was also just a reminder that if I'm not healthy for them. Our health is our truest genuine wealth. No matter what we're building, no matter how many books we're selling, no matter uh, what we're creating out in the world, if we don't have our health, that is what is going to slow us down for sure. And I had to take a step back after this really long uh, book launch, which was incredible. It was, you know, we were impacting so many people and we still are, but I really wanted to I I needed to for my own sanity and for the sake of burnout. I've talked a lot about burnout, but how does it actually affect our health? And coming from the medical field, I've always been enthralled with, you know, the doctors in our community, yet they haven't really been. And I've been very, very forthcoming in the types of guests that we're bringing on because I really want to brave these new frontiers of the future of medicine, the future of the toxicity in our environment, the future of really taking agency and ownership around our health and not just to better ourselves so that we could be there for our littles to actual, actually model this for our littles. And, you know, all this to say is like, wow, my mama would be proud today that in her, on her behalf, we are talking about these things for, for ourselves as mamas, for ourselves as givers. And whether you look into Chinese medicine around the emotional or the spiritual aspects of where we are not paying attention to ourselves. In my mother's case, the breast cancer, breast is, that's the nurturing, that's the the giving. Was she not able to give to herself because she was giving to everybody else? And Chinese medicine talks about where we would store those emotions and where those emotions would cause disease or manifest in disease. Now we hear this and it's common language, but that really has prompted my journey to write all of these books and to really bring this back forward to you today on what are some of the things that you can do for your health. So one of the things I absolutely loved doing this year was these cleanses. I did go through a Ayurvedic detox cleanse. It was not the greatest, but I did it. And it was a five-day detox cleanse where I was just drinking, and I was obviously under the supervision of an Ayurvedic doctor that I have here in Austin. Um, I'm sure there are many online 
But I would say get with a practitioner. We have interviewed some incredible ones that are releasing soon as well as in 2025. So stay tuned. And one of them is Dr. Chithi Parikh, which I think you guys are really going to absolutely love her. And we have another person on the show, uh, Dr. Nisha Khanna is coming back on as well as Dimple, who has this holistic brand on Instagram. And, you know, I'm learning more and more about and, and really falling in love with the Ayurvedic sciences that, you know, we've been exposed to from when we were young. And so I did this five day day Ayurvedic cleanse where I was drinking hot water and ghee in the morning. And you're like, ghee, isn't that something you cook with? Absolutely. But that's what I was drinking. And not only that, it was like, it was kind of formulated in this, in this herb concoction to make me purge and purge, not throwing up, but really allow my digestive tract to really cleanse itself. And that's the thing. We when do we take a cleanse out of the things in our lives that are maybe causing us stress? And earlier this summer, one of the other things that I did, so the the cleanse was, it was everything that my body needed. And I was very, very surprised how I was able to pull off doing the cleanse for five days. And then on the fifth day, you drink castor oil. I know it sounds gross. You're thinking about it like, why did you do that? And I love being a guinea pig for a lot of these things. And I obviously couldn't go to an Ayurvedic detox center for, for seven days or do a full punch of karma, which is 21 days. I've done that in the past when I wasn't two kids in and it was a lot easier to do, but I still wanted to honor my body in some way this year. And so I did that and I, it was, I was, my pipes were completely clean. They were completely clean. I was, I was, I felt so clear. I felt so nourished. I felt like a brand new human. One of the other things that I did, you know, this year was really take a step back in the amount of energy I was pouring into other people because I really wanted to preserve that energy for my family and for myself pouring into really regulating my nervous system because for the last few years, it's been on overdrive and we've been out of baby mode and it's been on overdrive. And I just wanted to just really nourish myself in warm baths, soaks and teas and all of the things to really nourish and really support my nervous system. It was on overdrive. And and that too, you know, detox. So I would do a lot of Epsom salt baths, clay, magnetic clay baths. I have this one company that I that I use that I love. And I would also support my liver for detoxification. And this was kind of the year for that. And some of you might say, why? You know, I think because of all of the things that I have been so aware of in in just health and being a wellness junkie, we have a you know two saunas in our home. We have a pump mat. We have the red light. We have the infrared therapy. We have a lot of the things, and us being such a such an advocate for well-being and optimization and, and personal performance, right? How do we have more vitality and how do we have more strength for our kids and how can we actually model that? That was a question that Ajit and I really was talking about at the end of last year. And every year we start out with how do we want to create our life for the next year? And this used to be a retreat that we would do for ourselves. We would do it once every quarter. Then it got to twice a year. And now it's now it's once a year. And, and now that the kids are older, I mean, the, the once a year is still going to be a non-negotiable for us. But we asked ourselves this question. And so as we are entering the fourth quarter of the year, you know, looking back on all the things that we did, I said, well, actually, we set it up because last year we did ask how do we want to brave our health? And I know one of the things we absolutely wanted to do was be really intentional, intentional in our relationships, intentional in our time, intentional in some of the things that we wanted to do. So 
It was also braving new frontiers, right? Braving new things, ideas, projects. I did a yoga teacher training. I was diving more into astrology. These were some of my passion projects on the side. I am currently in the mix of this journey of creating uh, my own chai company. And, you know, it's still in its early stages. We're still kind of in the formulation. I'm really excited about it. That's coming up super soon. We had to make some changes and I will tell you all about it when, when the time is right. And I'm having fun with it. There's no end goal to it, but there is this reverence of can it actually all come when we are also prioritizing our health first. Because what I didn't see my mom do after her remission, she wasn't supporting her nervous system. She went back into full throttle of the busyness, the keeping up with the Joneses, the three kids, there was three of us. And my dad was going through a lot of his business situations. And so my mom was, she was doing her thing and also just did, forgot to really pour back into her where then the cancer came back. And, and then this time it spread through her lymph nodes. It spread through her body. It spread everywhere. It spread actually to her lungs and her brain. And that was a very scary situation. So as we come up to Tober, how are you taking care of you, mamas, the matriarchs, the warriors, the ones who are go-getting and goal-getting and October seems to be that for a lot of us. There's a lot of activities. There's a lot of the planning and the Halloween and the and the Garba and the Navratri and the Diwali and all of these things that we are doing. And, you know, one of the things that I want to just reflect back on here that I ended up doing in the summer with my kids was trying to reach this goal of a thousand hours outside. And it's inspired by this woman who uh, wrote the book, until the lights come on. I'll link it in the show notes. I think I'm saying it wrong, but she is the founder of the podcast called A Thousand Hours Outside. And she wrote this beautiful book that I, I think I've talked about it a couple times here. And we were just so inspired as, as a family that we're, we're like, okay, how can we optimize our time with our family so that A, we're getting fresh air outside because we can't really do that. And we were in Europe for about uh, about a month and we usually are there for at least a month in the summer. But how can we actually play around with that where we are spending most of our summer days outside? Outside after the working day, et cetera. And we did. I was walking about 15 to 20,000 steps a day. Some days, 22,000 steps. And I, I have an all new time high of activity on my aura ring and on my phone. And to, to brave that goal, I was pretty proud of ourselves. Uh, and my, you know, now my son is like, Mama, how many steps have we gotten? Because he thinks his steps count too. And so, and I'm like, well, I was able to get this many steps done, but maybe he has too because, but you know, we're different. So, but it inspires him and he wants to know about his steps now too. And so these are the things that we get to model for our kids and set, you know, new norms. And, and that's what I'm really curious about. And we were able to also spend time with Joe Dispenza in a seven-day long week retreat where we were just meditating the entire time for the most part. If you've ever been to a Joe, Joe Dispenza where you are pretty much meditating for about 10 to some days, 13 hours a day, and that completely rebooted my entire nervous system. And, you know, just thinking back, I know that for some of our immigrant parents, they probably were, were not going to be able to ever do that because they were busy trying to put food on the table for us so that we could live a better life. You know, but what can we do for ourselves and pour into our cup, whether it is a seven minute meditation, whether it is picking up a card to see what the action step is on the back because each of these cards have an action step on the back that we could do that reminds us to pour back into ourselves. And so, you know, this really here is a reminder to what does self-care mean to you? What does self-nourishment mean to you? Remember that Chinese in Chinese medicine, if we are giving away our power in our heart to everybody else, but not to ourselves, 
if we are giving it to the Netflix gods or the Amazon Prime gods of, of our, our weekly weeknight TV shows, instead of reading a book of wisdom to pour back into ourselves or to plan out the next day or to plan out maybe your next year, this is the time I also usually do a vision board for the next year. So in some of you are like, why do you do it in October? Well, why not? December is usually crazy hustle or bustle because holidays. Why not get ahead of it and think of what do you want to create in the next year, 2025? And, you know, last week I was just in LA. I usually go to my annual trip there. And for those of you who follow me on Instagram, saw that I posted a story and people were so curious about it. And I will share it here. I am definitely not an affiliate for this, but because I love it so much and because I wish that my mother was able to get this kind of care and diagnosis, I now want to share it on the rooftops with people. And she is somebody that I found about five years ago and, uh, or maybe even more than that. But as somebody who also has dense breasts and women who have dense breasts, it's harder to find cancer tumors and it's going to get missed on a mammogram as well as it's not this, even though mammograms are still the standard of care, the, and you want to definitely talk to your physician about this. Obviously I am not a physician, nor do I am, you know, uh, elicit or solicit, uh, this medical advice. This is just my own personal story and opinion. However, you want to be able to look into it for yourself on ultrasound and uh, sonogram for your breasts. And if it's available in your city country, but if they find something in a mammogram, typically they will have you do an ultrasound anyways because ultrasound is a little bit more clear. But what tends to happen in a mammogram is they you squish everything, all of your breast tissue, and it's super flat and it's also really painful. And if you're sensitive to all of that, then I would highly recommend to check this person out, see if something like this exists. It's called sono breasts and they are in LA. And that was one of the things that I did as kind of this homage, like every October because of breast cancer awareness month, it's always a reminder for me to, okay, tune in with myself. How am I pouring back into myself? Even though there's the intricacies of life and you've got all of the things as well as how are you really protecting your time? How are you really protecting your energy? I know I've talked so much about the toxic people that can come in and out of your life. We haven't really talked much about the toxins in our life. That's going to be, I have a whole series of talking about that coming up and I'm so excited about that. It's coming up in 2025 and where we are really braving our health and where we are really braving the next frontier of of health and how we should really think about health and how we should really ask different questions so that we are taking a better advocacy and a better stand for how we want to show up in the world for our kids. And I think it's also because, you know, it's inspired by my, my mom didn't really have that. She was, she had to be reactionary. And I know for a lot of us, we do want to be there for our kiddos and we are able to now have the information at our fingertips. So that is my promise to you. If you could take two seconds, wherever you are watching this or listening to this, if you were following on iTunes, if you can click the follow button, click the heart button, the like button on Spotify, if you can click the subscribe button, if you're watching this on YouTube, it really helps us grow the show more than you know. And I'm curious to hear what you are braving. If this is inspiring you to take charge of your health, if this is inspiring you to take charge of maybe the things that you have been avoiding, maybe you are wanting to chart new course or chart a new frontier and really brave what that looks like. Maybe you have a month where you do all of this or you're kind of thinking like, oh my gosh, you're right, Nita, we are getting to the end of the year. 
how am I going to take care of myself so that I can actually show up powerfully with full vitality, with full energy, with the people that are the closest people in my life? Again, that was some of the questions that Ajit and I were asking last year. So I want to really pass the baton to you and really ask you, how are you, A, either going to do things differently or what are you navigating? And, you know, the other thing, as we are getting into our, you know, Indian holiday of Diwali, there's a series of different fasts that we do. And recently I just did a fast. It was for the Jane holiday production. And production is one of the holidays where you basically fast for seven days. And at the end of the seven days, it's really a mental and spiritual cleanse because then you're actually asking for forgiveness to any people that have wronged you, hurt you, or maybe subconsciously you've hurt them to ask for forgiveness. And I thought, what a beautiful way to actually allow yourself not just to detox from a food standpoint, or you're not going to eat sugar and gluten or alcohol, not just that, but also the emotions, the thoughts, the the meanings, the stories that we make in our head about people, situations, things that we don't really need that. We don't need the drama. We don't need the past resentments, the past hurt that we could actually let those things go. So, and you know, this is kind of a time where we're also doing this to prepare for uh, Diwali as well. So it's something that I would love to pass on to you. And I'm curious to know in the comments below, and if you are sharing this on Instagram, what are you braving? What are you going to be doing for yourself this month? Maybe it is one act. Maybe it is an action step on the back of this card. List three to five action steps you would like to accomplish towards your health goals this week, big or small. I, I added health because of the context. But three to five action steps you would like to accomplish towards your your health goals this week, big or small. Well, there you go. This is your reminder today. These cards are just so juicy. If you want to grab them for a friend, a family member, you can head over to thatsucknowwhat.com. And I will see you next time. Don't forget to be just a little bit more brave in your actions, in your relationships, in your life. And if this inspired you in any way, do let us know. Tag us on the Brave Table. Tag us at Sunitha Bushin. And also, you can also write us a five-star review. And when you send a screenshot to it at support at globalgrit.co, that's support at globalgrit.co, I will send you a free gift. I will see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye.